At the end of my last video about GPU thermal pads, I alluded to something that can be done to your GPU to lower temps and increase performance without any physical tinkering of your computer whatsoever, which of course is undervolting. And if you wanna know how to undervolt, I have a separate video outlining how to use MSI Afterburner. But let's not waste any time here. So the reasons why you should undervolt your GPU, number one, lower power consumption. Number two, less heat. Three, reduced fan noise. Four, less wear. Five, better performance. And number six is that it's free and it's easy. And to validate these claims, I'm going to share the results of a bunch of tests I conducted. And for some consistency, essentially, I ran through the same tests I did in that GPU thermal pad video. Using Metro Exodus and 3D Mark Time Spy as benchmarks to compare the differences between four different clock and voltage settings. I used 3D Mark to test out many different settings. Uh, it was quite the adventure, uh, but I settled on some good undervolts. So the four different settings, the first one, of course, is going to be stock. So we have something to compare to. And the first undervolt was to keep the GPU clock close to the stock boost clock and dial down the voltage as low as possible before things became unstable. So for my GPU, that was the clock of 1880 megahertz at 850 millivolts. For the second, I wanted to reach a sweet spot for my taste. So I lowered the clock a bit further and settled on 1770 megahertz, which was stable at 780 millivolts. And the last one, spoiler alert, was to see how low I could go on voltage without losing any performance, which landed me out of a pairing of 1720 megahertz at 750 millivolts. And that's it, those are the parameters. So let's look at the results. Starting with average GPU temps, both Metro Exodus and Time Spy see a decline in temps immediately, the first undervolt bringing down the temps only a degree or two. However, with a second undervolt, we get a much more substantial change dropping between six to eight degrees Celsius. The final undervolt the lowest, though only a degree or so below the previous. Next is average memory temps. Similar to the GPU temp changes, we initially get a minor drop on the first undervolt by one to two degrees, and a reasonable drop on the second undervolt by five to seven degrees, with a third undervolt again dropping slightly from there. So GPU and memory temps both received not so insignificant dips. The largest gap I think was 9.1 degrees Celsius between the stock and the lowest third undervolt. And that's a welcome change, but how does that actually affect performance? Metro Exodus starting off stock at 90.9 average frames per second with the initial undervolt gaining 3.4 FPS, which already is a win. Lower temps, even if slight, yielded better performance. From there, our second undervolt, which lowered the temps a good chunk, clocked in at 92.4 FPS, another win. And the last undervolt, my target was to match the original performance and at 90.85 FPS, I would call that a success. Moving on to Time Spy, we see very similar changes in performance with stock setting the bar with a score of 9,650, and it's immediately trounced by the first undervolt with a score breaking 10,000 at 10,017. Undervolt 2 dropping halfway back to stock score at 9,867, and the last undervolt just below the original score at 9,623. And with those results, I find it quite clear cut that at least for this GPU, if you're not undervolting, you're losing unless you're trying to heat your house with your PC. And the beauty of this thing is that it's a sliding scale. You get to choose. It's between better performance with slightly lower temps all the way down to similar performance with significantly lower temps and anywhere in between. But I still have more numbers to go over which belong to power consumption. Look familiar? It looks like an exaggerated GPU or memory temp chart. Check it out. GPU, power. Memory, power. You get the point. We get a tiny drop with undervolt one and a drop of around 17 to 23% for undervolt two and three. And that reduced power consumption directly leads to less heat, which leads to less fan noise and theoretically less wear, which will hopefully lead to a longer lifespan of the GPU. So I think with this quick test, it covers the points that I made here at the beginning of the video. One, we saw lower power consumption, which will lower the power bill, even if that's only by a little bit. And that leads to number two, less heat which is especially useful for small form factor cases. It makes them viable. Even in my case here, which is smaller than the typical mid case, I have the CPU radiator at the top and that GPU heat will undoubtedly affect the CPU temps. And number three, less fan noise. Because of that lowered heat, the fans won't spin as quickly, assuming you're on a fan curve. And also is that the drop in power may be the difference between your power supply having the fan on or off. 
And number four, less wear, which is only really provable with a wide array of GPUs running for years, but we can at least claim that the reduced heat will help lower the chance of failure, whether that be the card itself or the fans on the cooler. And number five, better performance. It was marginal. The biggest difference I think was only about 4%, but it's free. Take it. His voice got high. And number six is MSI Afterburner. It's free and it's easy to use, at least in my opinion. If you don't believe me, you can watch the video that I created on that. But that's all the good stuff. The bad, it's a pretty short list, at least that I could come up with. So number one is you could end up with crappier settings if you don't do it properly. But if I can do it, I think anybody can. Number two, not all GPUs should be undervolted. Higher end cards are typically going to see the best results. Mid to high end cards will usually be worthwhile, but lower end cards are often plenty efficient as they are. And I don't think you're gonna see much performance to be gained there. Number three, it may not be a catch all solution and may require monitoring or changing settings between applications. Some say ignorance is bliss when it comes to PC building. I get that, you set it and you forget it. So this may be one of those things you turn on your PC and you feel like you have to go check out or you might be changing settings between different applications. That being said, the second I bought this GPU, so our number two undervolt on this is the one I've been using since I got the card and I've not had a single issue. But again, that was my experience. That may not be the case for everybody. And I think that's about it. Uh, there's three, I maybe there's a fourth one and that's maybe you could cause an issue if you accidentally overclock or overvolt, but generally, the worst thing that could happen when you're trying to undervolt is an application crashing. And that's that. So to close out this video, I wanna quickly look at two different things. So two different questions. The first one is why does undervolting work? I'm probably not the best person to explain this, but I have a crappy analogy and it makes sense to me. So maybe it'll make sense to you. So you know, some video games with uh, machine guns, they have like a overheat bar. When you keep using that MG, it overheats. And then there's that cool down period before you can start shooting again. So I think of a stock clock on a GPU, like holding down the trigger indefinitely going through endless loops of heavy fire and cooldowns. That's like thermal throttling, right? Well, an undervolt is essentially, instead you're pulling in the reins on that trigger pull. It's more like a burst fire. And instead of overheating all the time, you're preventing that from actually happening. While initially it appears to be the slower way to fire, the undervolt gets more rounds out over the long term, even if it's just by a slight margin. And the graphs I have here between the stock and undervolt frame rates display this very well. The stock chart is just so much noisier. Question two is why aren't cards pre-undervolted? I had a friend of mine who recently got into PC gaming ask me that question. And the answer is pretty simple. And it's that not all chips are made equal. Some will tolerate frequencies and voltages better than others. So what the manufacturer actually does, they have to decide on a clock and voltage that will suit the vast majority of the chips. Think of like a bell curve. They're gonna to try to aim for the middle somewhere. So for example, my GPU, it's probably average or even below average in performance when compared to other 3080 ties. So someone with a golden sample will be able to push the voltage down further without sacrificing clock speed and end up with better performance. So in conclusion, undervolting is a fantastic way to reduce power, heat and noise in your PC while at the very same time gaining performance or at the very least maintaining. So with a little bit of tinkering, trial and error, you can have a lower temps, better performance and acquired a PC. So with that, this has been Tech Illiterate. My name is Nick. Thank you for watching. The chance of this one. Just read it, dude. <laughs> it is marginal. I'm not prop. <laughs> well, at the end of my last video about GPU thermal pads, I... When's Dan? Giddy, what are you doing? Oh, bugger. You need some attention to be a little monkey. Oh, little kitty. Yeah.